Well, hello, hello, hello. Check this out. I'm so proud of myself. I have some strawberry plants and they are producing the most beautiful little strawberries. I found four that were ready to be picked last night. So I picked them and I put them aside so I could have them with my lunch today, but they are so juicy and I can't wait to eat them. And it got me to thinking about a book that I love. You've heard of it, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Oh my gosh, this story is always good. And then I was thinking, how many strawberries did the caterpillar eat? And I, <laughs> what a coincidence, four. I'm gonna eat four today too. So I wanted to show you how to draw um, one of these caterpillars, yes. Um, I wanted to show you how to draw something from a book that we love. We love this book. Most people do. Yes, most people do. So here I go. I have my piece of paper here. I'm going to slide my book to the side so I can have space to draw. Okay, and I'm going to show you the steps now. I always, always say that if you use shapes, you can draw just about anything. Oh, wait, let's look and see what kind of shapes we have here. I see lots of ovals. The head is a round oval, and the shapes in the body are ovals that just go around and around. The feet are almost shaped like triangles, and so is the nose. I think that's what kinds of shapes we will use. So let's give this a try. I'm going to start on this side of the paper and I'm going to draw the shape for that head. It's an oval. There. And then for the eyes, there are two ovals. One, they're really big eyes. <laughs> and two, and inside there's a smaller oval. So I'm gonna take my time inside and make one just a little bit smaller than the first one I made. So far we've only made ovals. Hmm. The nose is shaped sort of like a triangle, so there's a tiny triangle for the nose of the caterpillar. It has two antennae and the shape that I call this is a raindrop. It starts out, starts out long, comes up, curves and comes back down right to where it started. I'm going to do another one and they're really thin stretched out raindrop shapes, but hey, that's wonderful. That almost looks like bunny ears, but we know that's how the caterpillar looks. Okay, <clears throat> this caterpillar is made of many, many ovals. And they're going to go up and come down. So I'm making my ovals connect to one another, but they're going up and then coming down. So I'm making each one start off a little bit taller and it goes up and higher. And higher. Okay, it's going up now. It's getting ready to come down. You know what this looks like? Gummy savers. It looks like a whole stack of gummy savers that have been squished together. <laughs> All right, we're still making that oval shape. I just curve and come around and back up. All right, I'm going, I went up and now I'm coming down. I think at the end it curves back up again, so I'm going to make them smaller. I'm getting to the end of the caterpillar, so I'm going to make them smaller and smaller and smaller and then the end. Okay. One thing that the caterpillar that I loved about this caterpillar is the feet were so cute. So right about here, I'm going to do triangle. One, two, 
three and four. Just four in the front. And how about we do four in the front and four in the back? All right, here we go. One, two, three, and four. Voila. Here's a friend we love from a book we love. Are you ready to color? I am. Well, there's red for the head, and then there's yellow for the eyes, and then there's green on the body, but I also see yellow green. Yes. Oh, and then it's covered with little fur, fuzz. I don't know what, it can't be fur, it's fuzz. Well, there's some blue and green and red, okay and some yellow around there. Okay, let's do it. Are you ready? Okay, um, when I'm coloring, I like to concentrate. I like to keep things, keep my colors in the line. Sometimes when I color, I have to go around the outside first to make sure I don't color outside of the lines. So I'm going to trace around this triangle nose here and then I should trace around these eyes. I don't actually accidentally get red in there because guess what? That's where the green and yellow go. So I'm going around this. Okay, now I'm gonna keep coloring in between right here. Yes, and I can trace around the outside here and trace around the outside here and then fill it in. I think it's a lot easier that way keeps it from getting too messy. Okay, this is yellow. This part here is yellow. I'm also thinking while I'm coloring this that since I had my four strawberries and the caterpillar had four stra strawberries, I'm going to add some strawberries to my picture. <laughs> I am. I think I have to do that. Um, then the eyes are green. Wait, I need purple. Yes, I do. The antenna are purple. I'm going to go around and then color the middle. Okay, the nose, I think the nose is brown and the, and the feet, yes. Funny thing is, once I trace around the outside of these little small shapes, there's not much to color in. You know, I know how to use lots of supplies like paint and markers and pastels, but crayon, crayon is one of my favorites. Boy, I just love a good crayon. Okay, so I'm going to go around the outside of this caterpillar's body with the green because this guy is just a big, juicy green caterpillar looking for something delicious to eat. He was very hungry. It was hungry. It was so hungry. And sometimes that's why they chomp on everything in sight and get all of the energy and nutrients they need because they're going to be changing. In the story, it ate a whole bunch of junk food and got a belly ache. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. But then he ate something that was healthier. He ate, he ate his greens. He ate his vegetables. He ate a leaf. <laughs> and once he did that, he felt much better. Kept growing. And got nice and big and fat. So I'm going around this part because this is the outer part of the caterpillar. 
I'm going to be using two green crayons to color this in so it looks more like our friend from the book that has all types of green inside. So I'm going to add some, some dark green. Now that I've outlined it, I don't have to worry so much about coloring outside of the lines. So I have some dark green in here. Yes. And honestly, I didn't color that in very, very well on purpose because I want to leave spaces when I'm going to come back with the yellow green. And so now when I color with the yellow green, I'm going to fill in the little spaces I left with the dark green. And I'm actually coloring in a circular motion because these different parts are made of oval type shapes. And it just makes sense and it fills it in so well. Now you can see the difference between this part of the caterpillar that has the yellow green with it and then this part that did it. So sometimes I like to use two colors that are similar together to make a dynamic effect. This is definitely doing that. I'm going to be honest with you, this is awesome. This has me feeling pretty cool, feeling very happy, feeling very satisfied. This is, yes, it's one of those satisfying experiences to color something and the colors are just, the colors here are just so much better than the colors there, right? I think so. Wow. I'm almost done. I think I'm going to add some strawberries. I think I already said, did I say that? I did. I'm going to add some strawberries to this picture, but I'm not going to put them all in one spot because I have a lot of empty spaces. Okay, so the strawberry um, to me has, let me look at it. Hmm. The shape of a strawberry is almost like an oval, almost like a heart. So. I'm going to make my strawberry come down and the bottom is round like that and it comes back up like this. Yes, and then the leaves are spiky. So I'm gonna do a zigzag line. Ha! All right, let me rest my little strawberry over there. I don't wanna get any crayon stuff on it. Okay, so I'm going to make another one and add the leaves, spiky, spiky. Okay, I need two more because it was four strawberries. So I'm going to make another one over here. Yes. And one more here. Perfect. This is going to be awesome. All right, and just like that, my picture is complete. I think I forgot something though. Wait a minute. I forgot the little caterpillar had these little hairs all over its body. And some of them were red and some of them were blue and there was this yellow glow. So I'm just gonna go and add these all the way to the end with some little lines. Oh my gosh. Details make the artwork just the best. So I need to add, keep adding the little details. This is a character from a book we love. Yes, I love this character. I'm gonna add a little yellow around. It has a little yellow glow going around these humps. <laughs> yes. So I just add some yellow curving around and the yellow when it mixes with the red and the blue makes a little bit of orange and green, but that's okay. This yellow crayon has been faithful. This yellow crayon has been making a lot of art. It is broken in half and it's still 
making art so wonderfully, yes. That looks like a masterpiece now. I, I needed that. That was the stuff that was missing. I think I'm going to add a picture frame around my drawing just by making a straight line that goes around the outer edge. Uh-oh, it's getting close to here. I'm going to skip over that strawberry because I don't want to draw my line through the strawberry. And I'm going to have to stop and skip over that. And yeah. Okay, here we go. Our friend, the very, very, very hungry caterpillar who ate strawberries on, what day was that? Thursday. So I didn't add the whole, oh, I didn't add the detail of the little seeds on the outside. Come on, black crayon, do your stuff. So I'm going to add a few seeds. <laughs> I'm glad I looked back at the cover and inside the book. The little details just make your artwork so much better. Voila. Well, I had a fun time today sharing this with you, drawing a character from a book that we love. And I hope that you'll come back and draw more cool stuff with me on another day.